guys, we are back again. Happy <laughs> days are here again. This is not that show. <laughs> oh, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> so myself and V1 are back to review Metal Gear Solid 2 for the PS2. First brought out by Konami in 2001. Steve, got a ton of uh, lovely feedback for your Metal Gear Solid 1 review. Excellent, excellent. Alright, you know the way Kojima, Japanese, bit of a pervy crew. A bit of a perv, yeah. Uh, the name Snake, it's a metaphor for penis. Yes. So, Solid Snake is... Erect penis. Liquid Snake is... It's less of penis. Solidus Snake? Semi-chubby. <laughs> Turgid penis. <laughs> Turgid penis. <laughs> And Snake Eater is well, pretty obvious. Snake Eater is the mission in the third game. He's actually <laughs> Naked Snake. Which makes him... Unsheathed <laughs> penis. <laughs> so Steve! Metal Gear Solid 2, what's what's the big story? Metal Gear Solid 2, the big story is that Kojima is a fucking troll. <laughs> <laughs> this game was hyped and hyped for years. If you purchased, I think it was Zone of the Enders on PS2, it came with a demo. So the demo was the opening scene, which is you playing as Snake on a tanker. It's set in 2007. And it's futuristic. You the the future! So basically, after the events of Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear Rex is blowing up, blah blah blah, Liquid Snake is dead, blah blah blah. Mm. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, word gets out that the US Navy have gotten their hands on a Metal Gear called Metal Gear Ray. And this is an anti Metal Gear Metal Gear. So its sole purpose is to travel the world and take out other countries and nations and groups that have Metal Gears. It's very powerful. So Snake is sent on to this tanker and his job is just to take pictures of the Metal Gear, take pictures of the US Navy sign on it, and then upload them and send it back to your boss. So you do that and then the tanker blows up the snake goes into the water and it's like fade to black and then it comes like two years later and it's like snake again you're swimming to to the target of your new mission which is set in 2009 it's two years later and your character has like a fucking breathing mask on for like the first hour so like you're going ah oh, fucking love snake i'm gonna kill all these fucking terrorists and save the world again and then like the second that he gets out and he's like he takes off his mask ha! snake's dead you bollocks your plane is uh writing so obviously fan outrage like they hate this game hate everything about it i can understand why like it didn't bother me personally because well a i knew it was coming B, like I said, I played these in a row. I didn't have the three and a half year wait. And it was the fact that the entire build up to the game is all Solid Snake on this tanker and he's building it up. This is Snake's greatest mission and he just yanks it all away from you. It's kind of cunty. But that aside, this game is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> It is still a top-down, 3D, stealth action game. But it's just things that you can do in this game are so... You can just do way, way more things. You can hang off a balcony, which you couldn't do in the first one. So, like, a guard can walk by, you get back up, choke him out. You can jump to crouch and prone. You can shoot from first person, which is probably the biggest game, game changer in it. It basically makes it possible to play the game as an action game. So if you want to go around and kill everyone, it makes it a lot more possible than it was in Metal Gear 1. Mm, the textures are better. And oh, it's gorgeous. Now, I actually played the PS3 and the Vita version, which are HD versions of it. So uh, uh, you'd never know that this, this game was made in 2001. It's absolutely gorgeous. 
fantastic looking. Um, oh, sorry, do you have any more questions? What is a Metal Gear? A Metal Gear is a walking tank, basically, that has a nuclear launcher on it. And the nukes that it launches don't use rocket fuel. And so they are stealth nukes, which basically means that they can launch a nuke from any place on the planet. And the country that they're launching it at won't even know that a nuke is being launched because the radar won't pick it up because it's not using rocket fuel or anything to boost. And because it's a walking tank, you can bring it anywhere. It can walk up a mountain and launch from there. It's an amazing piece of kit. It's terrifying. And the entire basis for the overall Metal Gear arc is that if someone has a Metal Gear that is ran by an AI. These aren't run by people. So if a different country ever launches a nuke, once that Metal Gear cops on that a nuke is being launched, it's just gonna launch everything. And so that fear is what, in theory, keeps other countries in in ah, the check. nuclear deterrence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Raiden, even though most people hate him, in terms of how he moves, he's actually a much better character than Snake. It's just, as a character, he sucks. Whereas <laughs> <laughs> Snake is pretty cool, you know. He's like a gruff, badass, just old man, grumpy, I'll fucking kill you type of guy. Whereas Raiden's like, oh, I'm a bit of a fancy pants, a uh, bit of a moan, a bit shit. Whereas the, the plot in Metal Gear 2 is... It's weird. It's like the actual game is great. You know, it's like uh, the brand new set of baddies, the new bosses, they're all cool. But the end of the game does some crazy fucking twists. It's one of those things that you could nitpick apart very, very easily, especially Metal Gear 2. But what it does in this plot has the biggest effect on the overall plot out of all of the games so that's definitely a plus awesome mm. what's the soundtrack like once again it's fantastic i don't know if it if it's as amazing as one like, I don't think there are as many tracks in it that you would listen to over and over again or that, that you'd put on your MP3 player or anything. But it's still fantastic. And, of course, the Me- Metal Gear theme is done again. It's been slightly changed, made a bit more militant sounding. You know, there's, like, heavier drums behind it and things like that. Whereas the first one is kind of like the soldier march that that they play when like a soldier dies that it's kind of like that but the second one is a bit heavier with the drums and stuff really cool stuff like is the writing or voice acting any better it's a definite step up from one the writing is pretty much the same but the voice acting definitely better i'd say every character is better in it with the exception of Raiden, who's a bit of a whiny bitch but of course you find out why he's a whiny bitch at the end and of course Metal Gear 4 makes it all right. Do you have any idea if the original audio would be shipped it would be Japanese and they just have vo- uh, uh, English, well, American voice actors? Uh, Metal Gear 2, English. 3 and 4 were performance captured. So it's like The Last of Us. It was the Japanese actors were acting and doing the voices at the same time. Whereas the US actors were just thrown in a booth to do the lines. So you're never going to have something that's as good as the actors actually in there wearing the motion capture suits. But it's definitely better than the first one. And you can't really argue if something is getting better. Like, How long would Metal Gear Solid 2 take to complete? Uh, it took me 18 hours. So why would people want to pick up the game? First of all, the game looks fantastic. It's 
worlds apart from uh, Metal Gear on the PS1. That's relative to PS2 games, right? Yes, of course. Narrative is excellent. Um, As I said, like, this is the biggest plot point over the whole arc of the Metal Gear. David Hayter as Snake is fantastic. He's absolutely brilliant in this game. The rest of the cast aren't as, as good. The world that they built is amazing. I don't know how we did it on PS2, but you can mess around with this world. You know, if you shoot a bag of sugar there'll be a hole in it and the sugar will (laughs) drip out of it and then um, build up on the floor in a mound. If you shoot a TV, it'll do that, you know, the circle of shit coming on. It's just absolutely amazing. There's a pub in the ship, which is the opening mission, and you can shoot every bottle, every glass, everything in that place. Like, how we did that on the PS2 just blows my fucking mind, like... Um, first person shooting <sighs> changes the game I mean the first game was a stealth game I think it's probably a bit cheeky that he called it like a 3D stealth action game it's really not he shouldn't have had the word action in there but in Metal Gear 2 the word action is fine because you can play it as a shooter it's not a great shooter but you can play it like that way if you want um, the bosses are brilliant i would argue that there's nothing that's as good as the boss battle against sniper wolf from metal gear one but then i'd argue that the rest of the bosses are better than the rest of the bosses from metal gear one so overall brilliant the art style animation beautiful music fantastic especially that metal gear one and that's pretty much it for the good points, which is a lot. Like, I've got, like, five lines of good points here. That's, you know, that's pretty great. So, uh, why would you stay away from the game? This game, uh, I'd say that the plot, it's a bit over the top. Um, <laughs> there are twists. It's Hideo Kojima's over the top. <laughs> there are twists in it that don't make sense until Metal Gear 4. And... Even though that's absolutely amazing in one way, it's like he's planning shit that's not going to happen for eight more years. But then again, it's a bit cheeky because you have to wait eight years to find out what this means. Like, So that's good and bad. Also, just being a troll. Don't have every bit of media showing you play a snake when you only play a snake for the first half an hour. It's just a little bit cheeky. Spoiler alert, Snake does appear back in the rest of the game. He tells uh, Raiden that his name is Pliskin, which is cool. Carl Plis- Pliskin? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Iroquois Pliskin. He says he's Russian, but he speaks like a gruff American. It's amazing. And that's basically it. There's really nothing else bad about this game. The plot's a bit crazy, and that's really it. Final thoughts. Once again, this this game is a must play. The art style, the graphics, bosses, uh, everything is just bigger. It plays so much better than the first one. Especially just being able to shoot a first person changes everything. I have to give this a, a 9 out of 10. And that's mainly based on the fact that this Metal Gear series now plays much better than it has previously. You should also buy this game. No, you should just buy the Metal Gear uh, collection because you get them all. Awesome. Yeah, good stuff, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So cool. I uh, hope you enjoyed this review of Metal Gear Solid 2. Thank you, Steve. Take a boo and thank you. And we'll catch you next time for Metal Gear Solid 3 Sons of Bitches. <laughs> and a winner. Is it.